have a barbecue family um, time outside this evening, Lord. We thank you for all you have done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay. Amen. Amen. Be with Melissa. And oh. be with my fiance, <laughs> Melissa. Yeah. Yeah. Can I have a little bit of steak? Yeah. I would say Christians in general, and myself included, don't know, don't know anything about evolution. So when we're bashing it or when we're tell it, just dismissing it outright, we're not even understanding what it says. And to me, to understand that God created will never change. No matter how much science discovers, God tells us, and I believe it, that man's wisdom is foolishness. To me, that tells me if, if I don't go and I don't learn, study to become a preacher, then it's foolishness. No, 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 oh. no. But and I, I know you're not saying that, but, but, but when but, you say but, man's but, 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 wisdom but, but, is foolishness, then why can't a Christian scientist come to the conclusions that evolution is true? We have to define what evolution is. I, I heard a guy say that he hold, holds wholeheartedly to the evolutionary theory um, as the best fit to its data. Um, what does he mean from that? He probably means it started with the Big Bang. Um, and and, he and to be wrong. And that's where I would say, no. Why can't God do the Big Bang? And why can't we can God... We can't agree on that. We can't agree on that. Right. Which day did well, he do it? What's that? Which day did he do it? I'm not, I, I'm not exactly sure this, the whole day stuff is my cup of tea. Maybe yeah. he yelled bang for because, seven days. Uh, and I've, what's that, he yelled Maybe bang? Seven days. I'm not saying science is, is worthless, but if, if, a, if a scientist's goal in life is to pollute, prove that Darwinism is, 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 is the way that we got here, he's going to die a very disappointed man. The thing that I don't necessarily appreciate about the Christian community is um, the dismissal of all things of evolution as being just a natural evil. Um, yeah. And that's how I feel things are taught to students. Um, mm -hmm. Growing up in a Christian school or a Christian church or whatever, is that th at the mention of evolution, you run. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's almost ridiculous. And as a scientist, as a Christian, I would like to understand those things. And I would not like to say, oh, well, God just did it. That's not, a, that's not an answer, mm -hmm. one, that holds much for me, or two, that will hold much in the world. Is that, does that frighten you, Mom? No, that doesn't frighten me, because I know he'll have the ability to search it out. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't frighten me. But Darwin, as I understand his teaching, maybe I'm wrong, made a direct, direct frontal assault to Genesis 1. And if he is going to say that man evolved from some slimy thing in, in the stream, then I, 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 feel, uh, I feel it's appropriate for me to tell, <coughs> to tell him he's wrong. Because I know, I, I know man didn't. OK? You because, know man didn't, and I don't know if man did or didn't. OK, then you're saying that we had one slimy thing and he cre created Adam, and another slimy thing created Eve. And but see, from Adam and Eve. That's such a gross, um, gross simplification this... of evolution. I understand, but that's the most important element. But God's they infusion to... of His self and of His spirit into what do you think, Mom? Into, help, help me out here. Into <laughs> humans was a supernatural thing, no matter how we look at it. Yeah. Whether whether. All of a sudden, he picked up dust, and like the Snickers commercial where you used to have peanuts in your hand, you get a Snickers bar, whether it was dust and man, and then God says, Yeah. You know, you're, I'm in you. God, so you're saying God created the elephants and the giraffes and, and created man, looked around and said, which one is that do I think is the best to represent my, my, my nature? And he said, oh, it must be man. So we'll make man intelligent and but give, give him the ability to reason see. and to think. I don't know. As I've tried to open up and tried to, yeah, to at least yeah. catch what is true and what is not true, I want my dad to be open to that too. He's, he's a, I wouldn't say stubborn, but he's a firm man. But I wanted him to at least um, consider and have an open mind towards the things that I have an open mind towards, such that I can go ahead and say with freedom the things that I would, would consider a possibility. Well, the only thing I can have a concern about uh, is exploring evolution, as I understand it, is that if Nathan spent his life work trying to explain creation, he would, he would come one step short 
And that's the miraculous element that God introduced that no man can explain. So if his, if his, if his hope and his dream in life is to explain creation, he's going to die a disappointed man because you can't explain the miraculous. He was laying down the line where he would stop, and I was just trying to tell him, I'm not sure I would stop there. I might go, go over the hill, go over the ridge a little bit further to explore and see what God has over there. But back at Wheaton, exploration beyond the limits imposed by parents and pastors can take students to some very disturbing places. Some of the most troubling questions come not just from science, but from the Bible itself. How do we make sense of, of sin coming into this world? If we evolved from apes, did just one day an ape woke up and decided that he had, God said, you're a human now, and so I'm going to give you a soul that is responsible to know right from wrong and who my son Jesus Christ will die for after you've populated the whole planet with your little humans. So that, there's that to deal with, and then there's also when you look at some of the family trees that are in the Bible, they all go back to Adam or refer to a descendant of Adam. So we seem to think that Adam was an actual person, and I don't know how to make sense of that. Emi Hayashi is studying to be a veterinarian. She went to a Christian elementary school, but a secular high school. At Wheaton, she is struggling to reconcile their opposing lessons. In high school, they automatically discounted the Bible versus in my Southern Baptist Church, they automatically discounted evolution. So these two, line, two paradigms are just completely separated. High school, it was, it was tough, and yet at the same time, I think it made my faith a lot stronger because I was constantly tested on my faith. People expected me to be a Christian. They didn't know what a Christian was. I usually take the defense of evolution only because I get annoyed when I hear a Christian say, well, it has to be six-day creation. There's no other way it can be done. The Bible says so. And then, of course, I just flip to the opposite side. And I play the devil's advocate, and that's not necessarily a good thing to do. But I, it's more fun. It's intellectually challenging to be able to think from a point of view that you might not necessarily agree with. If, if you look at the Bible, if you look at Scripture, arguments will... Paul's but for most Wheaton students, this is more than an intellectual challenge. Debates over creation and evolution go to the very heart of their ideas about who they are and why they exist. And no part of Darwin's theory is more troubling for conservative Christians than the claim that we have descended from non-human ancestors and not from Adam and Eve. I don't know. I'm leaning towards the idea that at some certain point in hominid evolution, God gave his spirit to hominids making us human. Because I, I don't believe human, early hominids were human. I believe that we're categorically different and that we do have a soul and we do have a relationship to the creator of the universe. But I mean, I don't know where that happened. I don't know if there was one Adam or if it was a group of people. I haven't decided that yet. Well, I was going to disagree with your Adam being a group of people. Okay. Oh. <laughs> See, I, I haven't theologically, that, Adam, How so? What do you mean? Well, yeah. I think theologically, Adam has to be an individual. Paul basically yeah, flat, I, says I, flat out, okay. since sin came through one man, and he means Adam, so salvation, redemption comes through one man, Jesus Christ. And so personally, I'm, a, I'm all about, I don't know. Do you think he was, was like one of a group? Or there was just Depends one? Depends how you uh, interpret man. <laughs> 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 to take the paraphrase of the... At Wheaton today, students are free to argue the possibilities of a literal or an allegorical or a multiple Adam and Eve. But for their professors, open debate on this subject is impossible thanks to the controversy stirred up by one man's remarks almost 40 years ago. At that time, I'd hardly been on the campus of a Christian college before. I had an entirely a secular education, but I had been a Christian for a long time. So being on a Christian campus was kind of new to me, and I'm not sure I knew exactly how to behave and probably didn't behave very well. In 1961, at a Wheaton Symposium on Christianity and Human Origins, Walter Hearn told the crowd that the same chemical processes that bring each of us into existence today could have produced Adam and Eve. When the news got out, Wheaton found itself under attack. What had happened is that some reporter for a very conservative uh, Christian paper, which was called The Sword of the Lord, which uh, you can tell from the title of it that it wasn't exactly a, you know, a peacemaking outfit, this guy had been really upset by my remarks or by the style. It is time for all of us to be shocked, thundered the sword of the Lord. Wheaton has swallowed a wholesale dose of evolution 
by allowing such men as Walter Hearn to express their wild viewpoint on the campus of a Christian college. Untold numbers of Christian people are seriously concerned about Wheaton. Fundamentalists flooded the school with hundreds of protest letters, including one from the mother of a Wheaton student. Twice I have heard that the college is growing liberal, that they teach evolution at Wheaton. What grieves me most is that our daughter may lose her faith at Wheaton. Is this possible? If her faith should be shattered or even shaken, I'd rather see her dead. To reassure concerned alumni and parents, Wheaton ordered every member of the faculty to sign a statement of faith, affirming their belief in mankind's direct descent from two real people named Adam and Eve, who had been created by God. Today, every professor at Wheaton is still required to sign this statement. The reason why, as I understand it, that Wheaton College main, continues to maintain the existence of a historical Adam and Eve in its statement of faith is simply because the existence of those two people occupies a key theological role in everything else that we believe. Evangelical Christians, and indeed all Orthodox Christians, believe that Jesus had to come and sacrifice himself on the cross and then conquer death by rising from the dead. Why did he have to do that? He had to do it because all of humanity was in bondage to universal sin, and then that leads to the question of where did that come from? Well, that in turn came from what Christians have historically believed was a historical fall by two human parents who uh, bore, in a sense, carried along with them, bore with them, uh, the rest of the human race and what happened. And so Adam and Eve, in fact, play a very strategic role in all of the theology of what, of what uh, Christians have historically believed. Forty years after Walter Hearn shook the campus with his shocking remarks, Wheaton is ready to try again. The branching tree of life constructed from the DNA... To help their students take a fresh look at the evidence, Wheaton professors asked Kansas State University geologist Keith Miller, a devout Christian and advocate for the teaching of evolution, to give the keynote address at a symposium on the fossil record and geologic history. So my response was to come to present myself as a strong advocate for the teaching of evolution and for the centrality of evolution as a unifying scientific theory, and at the same time, make very clear my evangelical Christian position. Many uh, evangelical Christians like myself, uh, and historically, again, since the time of Darwin, have seen no necessary conflict between the two. What does the fossil record tell us? Are there transitional forms preserved in the fossil record? And my answer is a resounding yes, lots of them. And, but first we have to know what is a, a transitional form. And I'll go back to Darwin's definition of a transitional form. This is uh, a Keith Miller's message to these Christian students is that all the evidence, from the ancient fossil record to the latest DNA analysis, compels us to accept the evolutionary theory in full. But for some Wheaton students, the implications of our descent from a common ancestor are still troubling. How you connect? Um, the Genesis account of man being unique in God's eyes and we're made in the image of God um, with us descending from a common ancestor. Mm -hmm. I think understanding what it means to be made in the image of God is a very, very important question. Um, I personally do not believe that the image of God is connected to our physical appearance um, or our origin as far as how we were brought into being. This is kind of a weird question, but do you think he just um, picked an organism or, and like said, okay, I'm gonna put my soul in him? I think one possibility is that, that God chose Adam and Eve out amongst uh, the other uh, humans that existed at the time and say, I'm going to make you a, a soulful spiritual being in communion with me. Um, I think that's a viable possibility. Thanks. I found it very, very good. I mean, I really, I, th I thought to myself, what a, a freeing thing it is that he would say very unapologetically 
this is my position.